Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with your hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Arthur Bergeron. Our guest today is Cheryl Lavalley, Assistant Social Services Director at the Callahan Center. Stay tuned. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I'm a friend of Grace O'Donnell's. I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell, biggest law firm outside of Boston. And because there are 70 of us there, everybody gets to do what they like. And I like this. I like dealing with seniors. This show, though, is not about elder law. Uh, it's about my friends Frank and Mary. You may have seen them in one of my seminars where I always talk about Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., and the fact that their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. Does that sound familiar? And if you live in Framingham, you want to die in Framingham. You don't want to die and go live with your kids in Ohio or Alabama or any place else. So you want to be here. This is where your friends are. It's the community that you know. So the question, though, is, who are the people that you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about so you can stay right here in Framingham? My friend and co-host is Grace O'Donnell who finds all these great people that we get to talk to every, every uh, month. Grace, who do we have today? Well, Arthur, I'm really excited to introduce you and our audience to Cheryl LaValle. Cheryl is the Assistant Social Services Director at the Callahan Center. That's exciting. Thank you very much for coming on to the show. Well, thank right? you for having me. And once again, my job as the out-of-towner out is to always ask, so are you a local, right? How did you end up in Framingham and a little backstory? Well, that's right? an interesting story. Um, I'm a social worker by trade, and yeah. I worked in Medfield for 10 years doing yeah. outreach in the Senior Center in Medfield. And one of my first mentors, by phone mostly, was Grace. <laughs> We happened to be in the same networking area, and I was yeah. new back into the field and knew it, knew with elders. I yeah. had done a variety of social work in many age groups, but not in elders. Yeah. And Grace was at the Norwood Council on Aging, so we would periodically meet in, the, in a, that area. Yeah. And then I found her as a great resource, and then 10 years later, comes full circle. Yeah. I apply for the job, um, I hear about, and I apply for the job, and there it is, Grace's name and Jim Schneider's name, who's the overall head of Park and Rec, who did Park and Rec for 20 years in my town where my kids affiliated with him through Park and Rec. So it's, life is always funny how things circle and yeah. come around. And so now I'm with Jim and Grace. And isn't it funny how as you get older, the, all of those people, it's like it piles up after a while. You get the feeling that you kind of like know everybody <laughs> and everybody else is just kind of there in the background. There's yeah. like a finite number of people, right? There, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Yes. So anyway, th so thanks. So I'm here now two and a half years at the Council on Aging. That's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And Grace was telling me about some of the stuff that you're doing. It's yeah. just terrific, terrific. Yeah, I think today you wanted us to focus on some of the um, assistive devices and programs we have for people with disabilities, low right. vision and hearing loss. We, mm -hmm. And Gra Grace did. Yeah. And whenever she talks about these programs, I keep saying, you do that too. It's like I come over here because most of the communities where I work are are are, are smaller and don't have nearly the the diversity of mm -hmm. things going on at the senior mm -hmm. center. So this all sounds pretty terrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty robust over there. So Cheryl, would you like to start off with the low vision group because I know you mm -hmm. had run a low vision group as well in Medfield, mm -hmm. and so your your heart was with this one when you came on board yes. with us as well. Mm -hmm. Um, they've really taught me, though, so I don't, just so I don't, I don't have the, the hardcore background in it, but I've been passionate about helping folks access services, and that's yeah. one of the ways you can do it with people with low vision. So at the Framingham Senior Center, we have, our Council on Aging, let's say, we have um, a senior, a support group that's been there for over 20 years. Um, and it's for low vision. A support group specifically devoted to folks with, who have, who have trouble with vision? Yeah, mm -hmm. and they can be at any stage of vision loss. And by the way, can you just give me, well, as a layman, right? Mm -hmm. Can you give me some kind of a definition? Like what's a, what's a low vision person? 
It's As a pe people have often told me that I have no vision, but, it, but that's a different kind of story. Well, it's, so what, it's, a, it's, what? it's just a, it's a gamut. I mean, yeah. you, you could be early stages of losing your sight, but yeah. you may be still be driving. You may still have you know, a lot of functioning, but you're starting to lose some sight. Maybe you have vascular, you know, uh, mas muscular, I'm sorry, that's gonna be my mistake. Mm -hmm. Vascular or mas like macular, macular degeneration. I'm gonna have to correct that one. Yeah. I macular it, degeneration. So if I have glasses, does that mean I have low vision, or is it is there is no, like a point be, beyond that that you really start saying, well, this this is more specialized. This yeah, no, there'll specific. be a disease process yeah. going on that's yeah. been diagnosed at some point, and is it may it? be in early stages of the disease, but you're still aware that you will lose sight over the time. So you're really obviously those folks are very nervous, very panicked. Often yeah. we don't see them at that stage really that early. They're really working with their doctor, trying to figure it out, uh, working with family to get support. It's a little later into the process, I find people will come out and say, I need more help now. You know, you're gonna try to figure it out on your own for a while, as, as people do with many things. Sure. But at some point, they're realizing they're isolated more, depressed more, and losing c contact with uh, the day-to-day -day world. So we now at the center try to bring them in to a support group where there we can teach them about resources, education, camaraderie with each other. They're talking yeah. the same language. They have the same fears and anxieties. Because I would think if I'm going through this at home, and, and I don't know about this stuff, my tendency, like if I have dementia, like with so many things, is I'm just gonna withdraw. Yes. And I'm gonna try to not contact people, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna say, oh, everything's fine. And when my kids call, everything's fine. Things mm -hmm. are good, Yep. right? as opposed to really trying to deal with us. Yeah, right? and that's gonna happen just in this process as well. Yeah. So once we try to identify people, and that's the hardest thing is just to bring people in. So we advertise in our newsletters, you know, having a show like this today is gonna to be very important so that people in the community know that if you are a senior in, in Framingham, you have support and we bring in speakers. And the group is actually run by Evie, she's our facilitator. She is with a, a, a group called Massachusetts Association for the Blind, and mm -hmm. that's a partnership we have. They support the group, they help bring her in to do the group. Mm -hmm. I'm in the background just helping Evie if she needs resources or some other additional things for the, for the group itself. Uh, but Evie is really the facilitator. And um, so right it, now, so there's a month, a yeah, monthly. It meets every the third Wednesday of the month, mm -hmm. um, uh, from 11 to 12:30, mm -hmm. and um, it's a it's a great. I've been in the group many times. I helped transition it when we got Evie on board. So Evie's Evie's been on board almost a year now. But the important piece of also for for the support group is that we have to have access to the group. So we have the new van service that's now actually no longer new. It's about a year old it in is January. More than a year. Oh, yeah. more than a year, and that's been really crucial for these folks because most of these folks, 90% that are coming in are not driving at this stage. So this is actually a Callahan Center van, mm -hmm. which is your van? Yep. Yeah. yeah, and people can access us and call us to find out how to get on the van service. Um, and we assist in people, especially with low vision, because there's paperwork involved. So we'll assist them in filling out their forms and getting on the service. So that's been really good. The other thing I just want to branch off about the Massachusetts Association for the Blind in terms of helping us with the support group, they also um, just recently did a training for our staff. And that was important because we felt like it, as we're looking at doing more age-friendly programming, if that's familiar to people, yeah. AARP is supporting mm -hmm. reaching out into the community and educating folks. Well, we got the frontline staff who are our van drivers to, to get some training. The, it was the secretarial staff. They're the first people that, the, that they're gonna come to the desk and say, right. I'm here for a meeting. Where do I go? Right. How do I get to the meeting? So we trained with, Ma with MAB, as we're gonna say, Mass Association for the Blind is referred to as MAB. Um, they came in and did a training for all of us, but I felt it was really crucial for those two. They're the first touch points mm -hmm. in the community, and they then were trained on how to greet, how to walk, hold, assist a person, because there's a lot of anxiety walking into a big building, sure. you know, and not knowing for, where to go. I mean, we're tr and then we'll teach them training. You know, they're getting used to being in the building, yeah. so we can take that further. And I suppose how to greet and do this kind of assistance without being overbearing right. so that so that all of these folks who are kind of walking in being mm -hmm. kind of nervous and anxious anyway are feeling like oh this is really friendly I'm yeah. not I'm mm -hmm. not it, they're not helping me in such a way that I'm sticking out 
right, right? which is and, and be a one challenge. of the one of the big points that they made was rather than reaching out and touching somebody who can't see that you were about to touch them, which you know. If you're suddenly touched and you're right. not expecting it, you can jump a bit. Well, what I they just recommend did. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that worked. That worked. is they recommend let the person know I'm extending my my arm to you. It will be over on your left and at about you know four o'clock, so they know it's down low to their right. So if you help give them mm -hmm. sort I of uh, paint a picture, if you would, of what they're expecting, and if after they take your arm as you're walking if you point out oh there is something on the wall on your left side you want to come a little closer to me so you don't bump into it so just sort of these things that we take for granted but that we should be aware of when we're trying to assist somebody who is blind or visually impaired so that they're getting a better sense of their surroundings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was an excellent education for all mm. of us and we'll, I'm hoping yeah. to, you know we'll we'll visit that not you know over time. Yeah, it sounds like it would be an, a great education for a lot of people that work at all the places where these folks go, whether mm -hmm. it's a supermarket or a restaurant or any mm -hmm. of these, or, the, or town hall, you know. Yeah, and that's... Excuse me, mm -hmm. or city hall. <laughs> that's right, right. We're all still We're getting still used to that, this. Arthur. We're still doing this. Yeah, that yes. fits in with what the dementia-friendly movement is doing as well, is trying mm -hmm. to reach the organizations where people go, stores and markets and right. banks. So this is the same concept with low vision, and I was glad that we at the Senior Center could try to branch out and educate all the staff, yes. you know, not to just have it be a select few of us that knew what to do. And I actually didn't really, some of this was really all learning for me too, mm -hmm. and I'd been doing the work a while, but it's been really, they've been a great organization. Now, the can, other can, can I just ask mm -hmm. you to step back for a second? Yeah. Uh, once again, I don't want, because I want to make sure we fit in everything you want yeah. to do. But I was also interested when you were talking about the, the monthly things that they do, like what do you ha what do you have so that if I'm a if I'm watching I'm a senior or I'm a friend of a senior who's got vision problems mm -hmm. I can say well you know this is really interesting you know it isn't just a you know a monthly meeting and they, people have a cup of coffee you know mm -hmm. these are the kinds of things that could be really helpful to you. So a typical meeting might be that people gather for maybe 15 minutes to say hello, greet each other. Remember, yeah. now these, they're branching out and making new relationships. These right. are becoming friends. Right. Now they're less isolated. So we give them time to connect. We might have a speaker. So re recently they uh, had somebody in from one of the uh, assistive devices companies that, that sell the products. Mm -hmm. um, we're not... Nowadays, they're not able to bring all the product to you. Um, it's just a marketing thing, but we can at least get people to learn more about devices. We have catalogs. I see. They can I look see. together. They can talk about, well, this really worked for me. What worked for you? I liked this device. I didn't like that. You know, this was some of the best, you know, things I found. So it's a real learning experience. And the whole goal there is to maximize functioning so that people are as independent as possible. And there's a lot out there nowadays that can be done. Um, I'm going to actually, that'll lead right into some of the devices that we yeah. have. I do want to mention some of the devices that we just recently um, received, we will need training on them ourselves. And so again, we'll use Massachusetts Association for the Blind staff to come yeah. over and work with training some of us. And I'm going to get right into it. It was an interesting coincidence. We got two donations within it was it a, a month of each other? I think so. Of these two very important devices for folks, and they're called desktop. I'm going to read this because I want to get it correct. No. Desktop video magnifiers. Desktop, desktop video magnifiers. Say that's five times. I know. No. Desktop <laughs> I know. Video, video magnifiers. Okay. So you have a screen, you have a surface that you can put your document underneath. Yeah. And then there's a camera that will be reading it, and the image will show up on this on a monitor in front of you. I see. And that you can enlarge it. In one of them, for example, we have the topaz. It magnifies up to 64 times. So obviously that's for a, quite, a, quite a bit of magnification. Right. You can do contrast color. So sometimes reading white on black might be better for somebody. Sometimes it's gold on black, black on gold. So I there's see. all the color contrasts to find the best fit for the person. And this might vary by person. Oh, it sure. definitely does. Yeah. There are people that will say, that. I can't do black on white, I can only do gold on black, or, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it's very personalized. 
And then um, it allows people to bring in documents that they need to read. They could bring in prescriptions. Uh, they could even be bringing in an iPhone that they can't magnify as much as they need if yeah. they're trying to read something on a phone. So there's a variety of things that they can do on that. So they can. So when you say you've got them, you literally have got them. They're, we they're physically at the, have them in, at the our, Callahan Center. in our computer room. And, and there's some, oh, and they're in the computer room. They're in and the computer and room. So that yeah. people can really access them. Yes. And the second right. one's even more elaborate. Yeah. And this one here, I was just doing some reading on today. Um, it's called the Clearview Optic Speech Unit. This one doesn't the Clearview just Optic, optic speech, speech Unit. unit. Okay. This one allows you not to just look at an image, but you can actually have the materials read to you. So it's text to talk or talk to text. So you can go both directions. You can speak and it will pr write it down or you can put an image under it and it will read it back. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I real that's the one I really would love to learn. Because I've, you know, I'd heard of the technology where, well, a lot of the, the, the phones now have them where you're talking and then the, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll write something. A lot of the doctors use them. Yeah. I'd never heard of anything going the other way. Yeah, so, it's de so that's the device there that we're really excited about. And that, it's also as many languages are built into the system. Mm -hmm. So it's multiple languages. I haven't seen the list yet of yep. the languages. Um, Evie, I know, uses Evie in our group. She does talks to tech, a text all the time on her iPhone. So that's another thing I want to lead into, too, a little bit. We'll get to some more devices, but I want to mention this. Um, Evie also is a volunteer in Natick at the mm -hmm. Council on Aging in Natick. And they have a special program they are called the Vibrant Program. And it, it's where volunteers with low vision the issues themselves mm -hmm. will teach another person with low vision issues oh. how to use these devices on a one-on-one. -on -one. So we'll get our training in framing him, but we also know we already have a, a resource right nearby. And we took our group over there in the fall, and it was pretty exciting. We used our van. We said, yeah. Randy, we got the van. Can we do something special? And we got a group over there to watch how they do this. And uh, they showed us some of the apps that they have nowadays on your iPhone. Mm -hmm. One of them was just amazing, and it was free. You can put an app on your phone, you use your camera, and I'd hold the camera, for example, to you and to Grace and yep. around the room, yep. and it reads what it's seeing. And it's a live person seeing your images on your phone, and it's live. Mm -hmm. So that person was saying, oh, yep, yep, he has on a blue suit and a mur burgundy tie. Grace has red hair and is wearing glasses. There's a picture on the wall, et cetera, et cetera. It was amazing. Explain to see. this to me again. I'm, I'm, I'm missing it. So it's I got okay. my phone. You got your phone, it's, yeah. and you're on your app, yeah. whatever. Yeah. There's a name for it, and yeah. I don't have that yeah. name right now. And you are saying, I'd like to see who's in the room with me now. Who's in the room? And so, so the, they and so the, turn and, it and with so the, the camera. I see. So the phone is, so you're using the kind of the camera piece mm -hmm. of the thing of the yeah. phone, and you're just going around the room. And the person on the other end of that app is seeing it, seeing the image that you're holding, that you're scanning. And so they are then describing that describing to the person who has you. the vision so loss. So maybe I want to put a nice outfit together. So you could Can call you one of your kids, and, and I'm just trying to kind of I'm playing this out. So you could call one of your kids who can who would then be seeing this. No, no it's a I'm, service. It's a it's an app that ha is specifically I for see. people with low vision. Yeah. That they're they're accessing a service, but there are live people on the other on end. On the other end that are seeing this stuff and now talking to you yeah. about that. Yeah. So stuff. I could say I want to get my outfit ready for a, a tonight's dinner, and I really need black shoes and and you're just going like shoes. and they're picking it out for you mm -hmm. oh my god you can pick out fabric colored monetary yeah. denominations you know anything really i mean is within reason i'm sure but uh you know so that's that was amazing it was an, a really a, a very impressive i don't know if you saw there's recently a commercial now on the radio about um this the, another app where people can go online and have it's like a gps but it's mm -hmm. it's telling you it's a woman walking down the street, and she has her phone on this app, and it's saying you have 30 feet to the bus stop, 10 more feet, and it's talking to her throughout her whole navigation. It's like what we do in our car. Sure. You know, you've got the person telling you, okay, you take a right on yeah. this. It's the same concept, but it's brought down to the scale of walking. Of mm -hmm. walking for mm -hmm. a person who is visually impaired mm -hmm. and, and yeah. is, is maybe using some kind of a device to make sure they don't fall down. Exactly. But would, would have no idea unless they'd done that route a thousand times. Mm -hmm. That's 
That mm -hmm. also was pretty amazing. So yeah. there's a lot out there, and then yeah. so that program over in Natick is teaching some of the higher tech things, but they're also doing simple things as well. Just somebody may just never have used a phone, an iPhone or a tablet, and they're teaching them how to access email, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And that's the talk talk to text, so that they can get their emails. Mm -hmm. So it's a range. Yeah. Anyway. That's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. And some other things that we have at the center is um, we're now members of the Perkins Library, mm -hmm. and that's where that's where people can get uh, download digital uh, talking books. So we can either do it for them or we could help them sign up for the library themselves. Um, we have a device that they can listen to their digital downloads on a device called the BARD, B-A-R-D. Mm -hmm. um, that stands for Braille and Audio Reading Downloads. So we have the library listings. We get them every two months. They send us their listing. And we can help someone access those uh, books and magazines and newspapers. And you have a room there where people can can, can go and yeah, that's be, something where with that, that particular right? device, right? We have to go to a quieter space right. because somebody may just want to come to our center and enjoy listening to a book. Exactly. So exactly. that's we do. We have yeah. to have, and I know our library has this device as well. Yeah. We can also probably arrange for headphones to be set up for that. Oh, so if cool. it were in a space that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we weren't able to give them space Complete. to themselves. Mm -hmm. They may be able to do that so that their their listening enjoyment isn't interfering with someone else. Yes. Yeah. But I suppose the advantage, among other things, of having that group that's there is that you've got folks who are suggesting things like that. Sure. Right. Because mm -hmm. they're because because they're 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 coming once again. They're not just being in their homes and they're like oh, you know oh my God I don't want to bother anybody. There's like a group of people kind of. And it's a lot easier to advocate for yourself as part of that group. Oh, right? yeah. Yep. yeah. So I'd say that that's some of the stuff for low vision. And then I know um, I wanted to let Grace discuss some of the other things we have in the in the building for people with low hearing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Grace? Oh, we get to, oh, so yeah, we both sure. get to ask her questions now? Yeah. This is, I don't do this very often. This is great. Grace? Well, we have a number of items called pocket talkers. So these are these little individual microphone mechanisms that you can tuck into a pocket. It, yeah. It's small enough to fit smaller than most cell phones. Yeah. And it you attach uh, the... Um, headphones and you can go into either a one-on-one -on -one with somebody or you can be in a room where they're doing a presentation and if otherwise your hearing would be impaired this pocket talker will make it possible for you to hear what's going on. I see because it's an amp it's really an amplifying device. Exactly. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are others that can be brought into if it's going to be a uh, a small support group, let's say, mm -hmm. they might want to set it up so that there's actually a microphone in the room. So that, for instance, uh, I know people in our Parkinson's group, some of them have difficulty speaking loudly enough. And mm -hmm. so if they have this microphone device, everyone in the room can hear them. So um, it's just amplifying individual. So exactly. it isn't, so it's the person that's having trouble getting, talking loud enough as opposed to mm -hmm. people having trouble hearing. Right, right. Um, and then there is another thing that can be set up for an, you know, an entire audience. You know, if we have a big presentation, we have 100 people attending, we don't know how many might have um, difficulty hearing, or maybe today somebody, their uh, hearing aid batteries died out. Right. Right. We can equip them with one of these devices and they can still enjoy the program. So this is like a techie's dream. Sure. You, know, you get to go yeah. to this place and just be able to play with all of this, all of this stuff. Right. Now this is really exciting. Grace has told me that at some point in our show we always have to say, so is there anything else that you really want to kind of emphasize just because we so often end up gabbing so much that we miss stuff? <laughs> Yeah, and no, I think for the two, but that's really for the two of you. Is there anything else that we that that that, that regarding these t that really to induce people to walk in the door? Because mm -hmm. so often that's really what this show is about: is getting people to walk in the mm -hmm. door, right? Yeah, I, I think people um, just need to know that that we're waiting for them. <laughs> you know, we were there to help, and and we've trained every. I mean, people have been trained f all all levels of the staff. I think are really excited to offer services to people that can't normally access things very easily. And now the van has really, really sealed the deal on that though, because right. that was op, op, an obstacle that was really serious for folks. Oh, um, sure. That well, were isolated with no no ability to drive. Right, right. especially and, vision issues. And right? the van is only $2 each way right. within mm -hmm. Framingham, and it operates Monday through Friday. Well, 
really Monday through Thursday from 8.30 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. Fridays we set aside for shopping trips yep. um, to Market Basket, but otherwise it's available. People, all they have to do is call the center to pre-register and then set up an account with MWRTA, and I know Randy has done a couple of sessions about, mm -hmm. information sessions yep. about mm -hmm. the transportation. Yep. But the, the real message is for people, as you get older, there are, in some cases, different conditions that come along that might uh, minimize your ability to interact with others. Um, there might be medical things that happen that you're not quite sure how to deal with. Give us a call. We've mm -hmm. we've seen it all, mm -hmm. and more likely than not, we have some other resources we can steer people mm -hmm. to. Uh, we have people who have dealt directly with it, and in many cases, we have seven different support groups that mm -hmm. happen at the Callahan Center each I, month. I was just going to so, say, but yeah, I think that one of the real broader themes of this is that one of the most valuable things you can do, in terms of showing people they're not alone is introducing them to the people that are going through the same thing. Exactly. Because right. you always it's think so it's powerful. just you. And, mm -hmm. and one of the nice things about being in a community of the size of Framingham is that it really increases the likelihood that that's true. Mm -hmm. It isn't like there's just you or there's just you and maybe one other person. There are enough people and, and that you can really be advocates for yourself then exactly. too. So that's mm -hmm. a, that's very exciting. Mm -hmm. And so if, I, if I'm calling and looking for the van, do I just once again just call the general number? Call the Callahan Center. They'll explain explain to you the process for applying and then connecting with MWRTA for that. And once again, what is that number? 508-532. I make you do this every show. 5980. 508-532-5980. Yes. And if they're emailing you, is there a particular, Google, or should they really be called? They can go on to the, the city's website, framinghamma.gov, and yep. look for the Council on Aging Department. So. Mm -hmm. Once again, you know, I always do this at the end. I, well, you know, how did you keep finding these people? So once again, this is just terrific. This is just yeah. terrific. I think for folks, for folks who have, you know, vision or hearing issues, or for people who know people who've mm -hmm. got vision That's or hearing right. issues and maybe right. haven't called or haven't gotten up the courage or whatever, the message is, you got the phone number, you're gonna reach one of these wonderful people. They really do always smile like this. <laughs> Everybody that they bring in, they're smiling all the time. So it's a very welcoming place to it just is. connect, to mm -hmm. just connect with them. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Grace, thank once you. again. Uh, and thank you all for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you.